In that case, we can move on. This last one from pose estimation is about architecture design. And it's actually one of the best architectures when it comes to uh, image transformation, when it comes to dense prediction, per pixel prediction. Let it be pose estimation. The method is for pose estimation, but you can apply it to semantic segmentation. You can apply it to any per pixel prediction task. So this is about architecture design. And I'm gonna be quick through it because there is a lot of intuition going on. There is human pose estimation. That's the problem that you want to investigate. You have K key parts or K key points or parts. You have an input image. You're gonna output K capital K heat maps. These are the locations of the head, uh, shoulder, etc. And each one of them is gonna have perhaps slightly lower resolution than your image, maybe twice smaller, but not too much. Usually the neural networks that we design, they're gonna have a stem. These are the first few convolutional layers, and they are usually strided, reducing the resolution slightly. Then there is the body of your neural network, which is gonna keep the resolution. Whatever that goes in, it's gonna have the same resolution. That's gonna come out. So this paper is about designing the body of your neural network. And then there is also a head of your neural network, which is the regressor. For this case, you are doing pose estimation. So your loss function is gonna be either L1 or L2 errors. But for semantic segmentation, you are gonna have per pixel classification and cross entropy. And we saw a bunch of different bodies when we were doing pixel-wise prediction tasks. One of them was our glass, which you reduce the resolution, increase the resolution. It is similar to unit architecture with some residual connections here and there. There is a simple baseline where you reduce the resolution and then you increase the resolution using transpose convolutions. So the black arrows are convolutions and the blue arrows are the transpose convolutions. We saw a similar architecture when we were doing fully convolutional networks. Then we have dilated convolutions where you are using dilation to keep the resolution the same. We saw this in deep lab type of architectures. And then we saw this architecture also before. This was refined net type of architecture where you reduce the resolution and then you have shorter connections. And then you increase the resolution from all of these combined together to give you the resolution of the output. And the idea is you want to keep the global information of your picture, look globally, and decide locally. And that's what your neural network architectures are trying to do. What is this one proposing? Not only you have these downsampling layers, you have upsampling layers from time to time. For instance, in this case, not only you're reducing the resolution, you're also going up. So this is sort of you have fully connected uh, graph between the input and the output. And what are the scenarios that could happen? Your output could be a combination of a copy and paste and some upsampling. Your output, which is this one, could be downsampling, copy and paste, upsampling, or it could be up downsampling and a copy at the lowest resolution. Mathematically speaking, these are your exchange units where you're exchanging un information from lower resolution to higher resolution back and forth. Your X's are these inputs at different resolutions. Your Y's are the outputs at different resolutions. So that's why K is counting. K is counting your outputs. S is counting your, or I is counting your inputs, different resolutions, your scales. And then these A operations are either upsampling or downsampling, depending on what you want to do, or a copy and paste identity. For your upsampling, you are doing nearest neighbor followed by one by one convolution. And for your downsampling, you have a strided three by three convolution, which, is, which has a stride of two. So you're reducing the resolution by two. And sometimes like these arrows and this other one here, you're just uh, reducing the resolution. And these are across stage these are exchange units, these are across stages arrows, you're gonna do a downsampling operation from one stage to the next one, okay? Let's apply it on uh, human pose estimation. 
let's use average precision at OKS50. So that one, I want you to refer to the paper, the, form, the exact formula for it. And it's about object key point similarity. We are doing multi-person detection. For doing that, you have two solutions. One class of solutions are like the one that we just saw, that's open pose, which has a bottom-up approach. You first detect the heads of everybody and then the shoulders of everybody and then try to associate whose head corresponds to whose neck, etc. And then you can change the architecture of that. HRNet corresponds to the class of problems or class of solutions that take a top-down approach. What is that? You first call a human detector or object detector. It's going to put bounding boxes around your humans. Now that you have bounding boxes around individual humans, you can look at each bounding box individually. There is going to be only one person in there, and then you can detect the key points of that person. And that's a top-down approach. And we are going to know how to do put bounding boxes around people and objects later on when it comes to object detection. So that's another solution. And that's giving you the state of the art using this architecture also. So this is one of the best architectures out there these days for dense prediction tasks. Any questions about it? And the idea is look globally, the global context matters, and decide locally. And mask our CNN, we are actually going to cover when it comes to detection later on. So was everything clear? Perfect.